So this is no longer a reactive temporary mission. It has become a mission to the end to make sure that we can actually uh, regain a level of safety that's acceptable in the region. Now there's still a lot going on, and, and I don't want to by any means uh, describe this as being done or easy, but the work is being done house by house, neighborhood by neighborhood, to ensure that these people, the people of the Etobicoke region, can once and for all by, by find peace. And I think the president has rightly stated that every operation is well thought through with the Kenyan team on the ground and the police force to ensure the greatest amount of security for the troops that will engage in these different combats. Now, obviously, it, this always comes with a level of risk, but we're confident that we do everything we can every time uh, to make sure that we're protected. And as I think, um, as the President has mentioned, coming out of New York, we had very constructive meetings with several partners. We're seeing new engagements. The EU, for example, has doubled its commitment. We're seeing new partners come in and make new commitments. We're talking to uh, Brazil as well, Mexico as well. Uh, as was stated, um, Salvador has recently, on the 3rd of, of uh, October, recommitted. But you're right. We would like to see a quicker response. Uh, we would like to see more commitment. Uh, and we're going to continue uh, to push for it. Okay. We can take a bunch of three more questions, two more questions, then after that we can wind up to the questions. All right. My name is uh, Nick Modimba from uh, CGT in Africa, China Global Television Network. The first question is, uh, what's the situation with the motivation of the Kenyan police units in terms of their payments? Reports coming in from Haiti say they haven't been paid yet. And of course, they have families back at home, depending on them. And of course, they're looking forward for their uh, people to come back home. Uh, second question, redeployment training. What have the current officers learned in Haiti that are actually instilling the same uh, ideologies, survival tactics to the current ones yet to travel to Haiti? And also, which units are these that are actually joining the others in Haiti? Thank you. Your Excellencies, my name is uh, Melita Oletengues uh, for Citizen TV. Uh, my question is um, in regards to uh, President William Ruto uh, speaking about uh, asking the international community uh, to honor their pledges and march, march them with actions. Uh, perhaps is there a setback for uh, human resource, especially in the MSS, uh, when you're saying uh, that uh, uh, we are working leaner in terms of resources? Has there been a setback in terms of uh, remunerating the operatives on ground? Thank you. Okay. Your, Excell Your Excellency, my name is Nyaboga Kiage from Nation Media Group. Uh, my question is, uh, for the longest time, people in Haiti have been claiming that the Kenyan officers do not leave their camp. How true is that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think all those questions you've asked are interconnected in some way. There is information that I can provide to you on um, matter security, but to a certain extent. Um, it will not, it's not necessary for us to tell you which units are participating in this uh, operation because those are security matters. But on the whole, we have a budget that takes us all the way to March next year. So in terms of being able to support our officers on the ground, including those who are joining next month, um, we have resources to make sure that um, they have every support that they need up to March 2025. We are asking the international community to step up because our mandate extends all the way uh, to October uh, next year. Um, all the other issues have been um, taken care of as for the status of uh, the MSS security personnel and how they are operating. I think you've heard from the Prime Minister the kind of robust engagement that is going on with our um, security personnel. I do not think that uh, they would be in a camp 
and at the same time be in the operation area that the Prime Minister has just talked about. Maybe Prime Minister can. Really just to add that I personally have been on patrol uh, at 1 o'clock in the morning with uh, our Kenyan brothers and sisters that are working with us. They've engaged in very delicate and difficult operations in the center of the city. They've helped us com commence to secure our port. They're involved in patrolling the university hospital in the administrative area. And more important, they're, up, uh, they're with us up north, working closely with the police force to address the current threat with the gangs. And they do so with the level of professionalism and expertise that we've learned to trust and admire. So I can tell you safely that no, we are engaging. They also, the leadership is also very much engaged with the leadership of the police force in strategic thinking, in understanding, in collecting intelligence, and in finding out how to use it more effectively. So that exchange is also helping build up the capacity of the Haitian force itself. So let me be very clear. The presence of the two contingents that we have now have been extremely, extremely helpful in helping us make the progress that we are seeing now. Thank you very much. Um, just so that you know, we've had, um, Prime Minister and I, we had different meetings in Washington at the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. I had engagement with uh, Secretary Blinken, and um, they have also committed to provide more capabilities in terms of transport and other facilities that would help uh, us uh, move forward. I must commend Prime Minister that um, 10 days, 11 days ago, schools were opened in Haiti after a very long time. That's an act of courage, and uh, we intend to um, provide support and ask the international community to come along with us because there will be requirements for rebuilding some of the schools, rebuilding uh, some of the hospitals and other facilities for the people of Haiti to begin to regain normalcy in their lives. And that additional support, aside from the security um, personnel um, and, and the stability and peace that we are pursuing, will be necessary to carry the community along with the social infrastructure that will help uh, stabilize uh, the country, create hope, and move people to the next level. So otherwise, thank you very much, and thank you for coming for the press conference. Asante Sana. Thank you, Excellencies. That brings us to the end of this press briefing. We shall allow the Excellencies to retreat as we'll be guided on our next steps from here.